Well, if you're looking for a car that's spacious and comfortable and loaded with luxury, but you don't want stately, you want sporty and stylish, well, BMW think they might have just the answer for you. This is the car that they're bringing soon to India, the 6 GT, and I'm here in Lisbon to find out what it's all about. This car basically replaces the previous 5 GT, but its wheelbase is shared with the regular 7 Series. Now, since we have the long wheelbase version of the 7 Series in India, there will be enough distinction between these two models. The nose is similar to the 5 Series with the headlamps that fuse into the twin grille, and though the 6 GT shares a lot with its siblings, it stands apart by creating its own identity. Its lowered height, steeply raked windscreen and flowing roofline make it striking. The muscular lines give it presence. The air vents on the side not only improve aerodynamics but give it some sportiness and the frameless doors add flair. The wedge-shaped rear with its wraparound tail lamps just completes the overall appeal. It's definitely more stylish than the outgoing 5 GT, in fact it is a striking car. Now apart from just the good looks, its form has function too. The notchback lets it open up a large 610-litre boot that can be extended to a full 1800 litres. Step inside the 6GT and you do get that sense of occasion, the sense of luxury that you absolutely want from a car of this category. The interiors, although very familiar because you see a lot of common things between the 5 and the 7 series, still has that top quality, great materials and of course it comes feature loaded too. You get a screen-based instrument panel, big high-resolution touchscreen, gesture control, surround view cameras, remote parking, 10-inch screens for the rear seat passengers, a 1400-watt Bowers & Wilkins sound system and even the ability to create a Wi-Fi hotspot. Those are some of the goodies, but there are more driver assist systems that are under the skin. While we aren't sure how many of them will make it to India, what we do know is we will get the air suspension with the dynamic damper control. Now the advantage of having the air suspension is quite substantial, I think, especially in a country like ours where sometimes you have to go through potholes and bigger speed bumps. So what you can see happening here is that the ride height is rising. Yeah, you have about 30 millimetres of travel that you can play with and you can raise the car quite substantially off the ground as you can see. So that's one of the big advantages. And of course, the second feature that I quite like is this rear spoiler that you can activate. Yes, you can do it manually as well, but when you're driving, it automatically activates at around 120 kilometres an hour to give you that additional downforce and it will retract itself at 70 kilometres an hour. And whilst that happens, the car will also lower itself on the move, if we need, by 10mm to give you that more sporty feel. So, we've ticked the stylish and sporty boxes, let's talk space. Well, this is a car that's going to now rival the E-Class, the long wheelbase version that we have in India. And I have to say that there is a considerable amount of room here. It's not as much as you get in the E-Class, but there's still loads of leg room, uh, even for the tallest of people. I'm not the perfect reference, but as you can see, there's plenty of leg space over here. The seat, although contoured for two passengers, can fit a third one in quite comfortably and it does feel extremely spacious. The seat is a bit low set, still there's no feeling of being hemmed in, there's lots of glass area, there's a sunroof as well, so a nice, spacious, airy back seat to be in. Apart from the space, you get side air vents and central ones to keep you cool with temperature control as well. You have these nice pillowy soft covers for the headrest that let you get really comfortable and if you want to get even more comfy, you can recline the seat to quite a considerable amount. So, yes, this is the lap of luxury. So far, the stationary 6 GT had me impressed. But with the coastal road alongside, the temptation to drive was just too great. And it was time to get behind the wheel. So what I'm driving is the 40i. Now this engine gets going really nicely, it's got a good amount of torque, it's creamy smooth, 
even at 90 when I put my foot down I've got this giant wave of torque just vaulting me forward it's pretty amazing to drive and I'm enjoying it but unfortunately I don't think this is the engine that will come to India what we will probably get is the 30D that powers the 5 series let's not forget that this version of the car has shaved off 150 kg over the previous 5 GT so the same 265 HP turbocharged 3 litre diesel inline 6 that powers the 5 series in India in standard rear wheel drive guys can do a 0 to 100 sprint in 6.1 seconds it's plenty quick and only marginally slower than the similarly specced 5 series. And you can expect the smoothness and mid-range punch that you get in the 5 as well. Now if you get a nice winding section of road, all you have to do is switch it into sport. And yes, everything hunkers down. I definitely feel more connected to the road. Much more weight in my steering. Throttle response is quicker. Gear shifts are faster. And if I want, I can even hold on to a gear much longer. The car feels well planted at high speeds, it corners well and in sport, body roll is also much better contained. It's quite enjoyable to drive on a quick winding section of road. Now this car aims to get, you know, the perfect setting between sporty and comfort. What you have here is the option to get extra comfortable with a setting that is Comfort Plus. And this means that the ride gets really soft, it glides over all the bumps and potholes, even the sharper ridges don't catch it out. And though the roads here are pretty much smoother than mine, I have taken it over some rough spots and I can tell you even in our conditions, this ride will be comfortable. The comfort setting is divided into plus and standard modes. Now as you pick up the pace and you have undulating sections of road, if you find that comfort plus is getting a bit too soft, all you have to do is switch it back to standard and you have a good comfy ride without much movement anyway. Tethers it down a little bit better. And then of course there are all the driver assist systems and although they may not make their way to India at this time, it's interesting enough to talk about. If you get bored of driving along a road and even if it's a twisty windy section, all you have to do is press the button for driver assist system on your steering wheel, lift your hands off and as you can see it's even taking the corner for me. It's a bit scary and uh, I keep feeling like I have to put my hands back on, especially when I see a car coming at me in the opposite direction, but it's keeping to the lane extremely well. I have another slight corner coming up. Yeah, just doing the work for me absolutely easily until it decides that I'm going a bit too quick for it and then it warns me to put my hands back on. The 6 GT had me impressed on many counts. Practicality with its spacious cabin and large boot, the comfort of its back seat, its sportiness with its agile driving manners, and its luxury with its high quality interiors and feature list. So the 6 Series GT will be seen in India in 2018. It will bridge the gap between the 5 Series and the 7 Series and will rival the likes of the long wheelbase E-Class in India. Will be priced similarly too. Now, what do I think about this car? Well, I think it is a well-rounded package. Not only is it spacious and luxurious and comfortable and practical, it's sporty and stylish looking too.